Hi, this is Gary Kay from Rave Publications, and I am super excited to be joined by our keynote speaker tomorrow, uh, Dr. Michio Keiku, who um, is the keynote, as I said, and also a, uh, not only a television star in your own right, but also an author, uh, author of one of my favorite all-time books, Physics of the Future. And uh, Dr. Keiku, first of all, good morning, and thanks for joining me. Glad to be here in Amsterdam. It is a beautiful city, and you got a nice sunny day here right. after four or five straight days of rain. But... I'm here to talk to you about um, some of your theories and so, some of your um, predictions about the mm -hmm. future because our industry is always future forward thinking. Um, I teach at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill and I have um, required my students since 2011, I think when you came out with the book, to read Physics of the Future. Um, I'm a big fan of your work and also um, I get excited to hear about future, um, future technologies. and. I want to kind of relate it to um, our industry specifically. Obviously, you're here to do a keynote on a on a commercial AV industry, digital signage industry. Um, right now, we see displays and as rectangular things that are mounted on the wall, and and um, we've been sort of treating them as sort of boxes and windows uh, hanging on the wall for years in classrooms, boardrooms, training rooms, that kind of stuff. You teach. Um, what do you think the future of display technology is? You're the expert. Well, for thousands of years, we've had images, as you said, basically a flat screen. That's going to all change because, first of all, chips will eventually cost about a penny, meaning that intelligence will be everywhere and nowhere. So, for example, when I see you in the future, I'll see you in my contact lens. I'll see your biography next to your name when I look at you. And when you speak to me in Chinese, it'll translate Chinese into English and give subtitles. And if we want to bring a third person on for this interview, boom, we can have the image of a third person on the other side of the earth joining us as if the person were really there. And then when you want to talk to, let's say, a doctor, you talk to the wall. The wall is intelligent because we have intelligent wallpaper now. And you talk to the wall and boom, Robodoc appears. Robodoc is artificially intelligent, accesses the entire internet for sound medical knowledge, almost for free. Gives you sound medical advice just by saying, mirror, mirror on the wall, I want to talk to Robodoc. Now that's very handy because if you're in a car accident and you got to talk to Robo Lawyer, <laughs> Robo Lawyer will be right there in your wristwatch, in your contact lens, in the wall. Again, artificially intelligent going through all the legal precedents of the past, speaking in plain English and giving you sound advice through artificial intelligence. I think the pl speaking in plain English part is going to be appealing. So what all, obviously for all that to happen, we have to have connectivity of everything. I mean, it's kind of been branded as the Internet of Things. Um, that's kind of the, the hype word that I think everyone likes to use. But it's a lot more complicated than that because it's not just an Internet of Things. There's an amazing amount of artificial intelligence and actual intelligence behind all of that. So what do we need to do to get there? Well, when chips cost a penny, they'll be distributed everywhere. So intelligence will be everywhere and nowhere like electricity. Electricity today is almost for free. It's everywhere. It's in the walls and the ceilings. You don't even think about it, but it's everywhere and nowhere. So in the future, for example, when you want vast amounts of information, boom, right there in your contact lens, in your wristwatch, in the walls, you'll have that kind of intelligence right there ready for you. And based on our current sort of uh, trajectory, on uh, bandwidth capabilities and, and the technology you've seen so far, uh, the vision that you're seeing is how far away. In your book, you sort of divide it into near future, mid future, far future. Um, how would you sort of uh, characterize what you've described so far? Well, we have Moore's Law. Doubling time for computer technology is 18 months. That means many of the predictions that I made in Physics of the Future are gradually coming to be. Yep. You mentioned Internet of Things, which of course are mainly sensors distributed throughout the environment. So the next time you go to the bathroom, you're going to have a complete medical exam right there. <laughs> You're going to be able to have your bodily fluids analyze liquid biopsies, giving you sound advice about whether or not you have cancer colonies growing in your body maybe 10 years before a tumor forms. When you go to the doctor's office today, get a complete medical exam, you could die of a heart attack the next day. You could be diagnosed with cancer right after getting a complete great bill of health. Those days are going to be gone. 
because in your bathroom you'll have a cell phone with an MRI machine inside allowing you to scan your body with your, by yourself in the privacy of your living room, have your blood, bodily fluids analyzed for cancer colonies years before a tumor forms. The word tumor will disappear from the English language. Compliments of chips that cost a penny. I love the idea of the chips that cost a penny. Uh, it's a great vision of the future. Um, if you had to predict, you know, or maybe I'll ask you a different way. What is your favorite new technology? What's, if you looked at all the stuff, we've seen a lot of stuff come out of companies that we probably wouldn't have expected new technology to come from. Companies like Facebook and Google, who years ago or a few years ago were known as a, a totally different company than they are now. And then, of course, we've got the traditional technology companies like the Microsoft and the Apple and and the and the Motorola's that you know have changed obviously Sony's and and uh, and uh, Mitsubishi's and the brands that everyone recognized if you had to look at sort of over the last year or two what's what thing have you looked at and went wow that is really neat well, on the short term, we're going to be living in something called augmented reality. Mm -hmm. So that every time I look at something through my contact lens, wristwatch, intelligent wallpaper, I'll know what I'm looking at, I'll know who I'm talking to, I'll have a description, and I'll know exactly who you are uh, giving this interview. And further down the line, the internet will be replaced by BrainNet. That's the Internet 2.0. We're going to be sending emotions. We're going to be sending memories, feelings on the Internet. And, of course, teenagers are going to go crazy. Their, their first kiss, their first dance, all the emotions and excitements emailed to all your best friends. We have now broken the code of the human brain. We can now connect the brain to a computer, and we can now upload memories for the first time in history. That was done just a year and a half ago. Memories can now be uploaded and downloaded. But, of course, there's also uh, difficulties. Uh, at MIT, they were able to actually upload a false memory. And so <laughs> you can imagine what's going to happen if false memories can also be uploaded. Think about it. Uploading the, the memory of a vacation that you never had. If it's a good one, that's not so bad, right? <laughs> right. So Remember, uh, this was done in animals, but next will be primates, and after that, Alzheimer's patients will have memories uploaded into their hippocampus as they forget things, like where they live and who they are. And after that, who knows, maybe you'll learn calculus by going to sleep. <laughs> that, that, that also sounds interesting. So, so augmented reality is uh, something that you're really excited about and pay attention. Term, that's right. Everywhere you look, there'll be a description. You'll understand who you're talking to, what you are looking at. And think about this. Who are the first people to buy Internet contact lenses? College students taking final examinations. <laughs> They'll simply look at the exam sheet and boom, all the answers will appear right there in their contact lens. I hadn't They'll thought about it. that. They will absolutely love that. Uh, politicians will have scripts, scripts are right there in their contact lens. They'll never miss a beat when they give a speech. And so this is the message that you're going to deliver tomorrow. And you're going to, I would assume that you'll have, you'll have some, uh, this will spark some ideas for manufacturers and help push them along to development of creativity. And one more idea. We're headed towards something called what I call perfect capitalism. That is, supply and demand are going to be perfect. When you go into a store, you don't know what things really cost, who's cheating you, what the best product is. In the future, your contact lens will scan all the products and tell you who's cheating you, who has the best price. You will know everything about a product. And the producer, of course, will know everything about the demographics of the buyer. That's called perfect capitalism capitalism supply and demand become perfect which means more efficiency cheaper prices more conveniences but more competition as well so the big winner is the consumer the consumer is the big winner well there are a lot of people out there tomorrow that are going to be excited to hear from you and excited uh, that you're here as the uh, there are already thousands of people already excited that you're the keynote speaker um, Thank you very much for being here for uh, ISC. Everyone's going to enjoy this, and your vision of the future is super exciting. I just hope that uh, I live long enough to see all this because I want to be part of it, right? right. Yeah, right. exactly right. Remember, there are winners and losers in the future, and the audience here in Amsterdam are the winners. 
Well, we're definitely going to be the winners because we're going to hear from you tomorrow. You're going to give us some vision and some uh, direction for the industry. And uh, for those of you who haven't read Physics of the Future, it is an amazing book. It will open your eyes to seeing things in a different way, not just seeing them that they, the way they are today, but seeing what they could be. So I thank you for that book. Um, and uh, uh, keep keep writing them because uh, your predictions are exciting to read. So thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. And I uh, appreciate you watching. And, of course, uh, we've been covering the whole ISE show, which we will continue to do. And we'll be at Dr. Keiko's uh, keynote tomorrow. And so you can watch it all at ravepubs.com. Thank you.